Welcome back to this Rift Let's Play. You're with Sambo, Seraphis, and oh my god, what the hell are you doing, Tallahassee? What are you doing? Welcome to you. Giving you a nice view of my ass. That, <laughs> that is exactly what you're doing. Thank you, Carlton. That was a great pickup by you. If any of you guys watching at home uh, saw our last episode, you'll know that um, Tallahassee, aka Romanova, from our Let's Play DC Universe Online series, picked up that this is indeed the Carlton dance from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Couldn't agree with you more. You're a big fan of that show, no doubt, mate. Yes. Yeah, I loved it too. Um, In so West Philadelphia, born and raised. It, he <laughs> oh dear. It's going to turn into one of those days, isn't it? Anyway, oh my god, look at him. That is, that is the best dance ever. Period. I love it. So anyhow, as you will remember, folks, we left off at the end of the last episode with me having to make a choice. And thanks to Tallahassee, we had the whole concept of souls explained to us. And I've got eight here that are taunting me, saying, pick me, pick me, and I only get to pick one. But as you keep saying, Tallahassee, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we get to choose three anyway. One thing I just wanted to show you guys before we do move forward is that when you're at this stage of the quest and you're able to hover over these eight souls, you can actually control click on them. So for example, let's take Elementalist. If we control click and there we go, what it brings up is the actual soul tree itself. So this is giving you a preview of what to expect later in the game because like many games you decide on a tree you have no clue what's coming up in the levels ahead did you make the right choice is it your play style is it spells and abilities that you actually enjoy playing so in this case we've called up elementalist up the top here it's showing us all the talents so these are like the passives and the enhancement abilities that we can talent into you can see here zero five zero five um, let's take a look at one in particular. Biting Cold increases this critical hit chance of your spells by 1%. So this is where um, you put points very similar to the World of Warcraft talent tree. But right off the bat we can see what they're doing. And then down the bottom half of the window, and this is the bit I like the most, this is actually showing you what abilities will appear on your hotbar. So for example, um, if I was to choose Elementalist, right off the bat I'm going to get these one, two, three abilities that I can put on my um, ability bar. And they are Crystalline Missiles, so that's obviously a salvo of projectiles. I've got a Dismiss Pet function because yes, the Elementalist can actually summon a Lesser Earth Elemental. Let's close that and for example have a look at the storm caller control click on that and you'll see there you go it's telling me right away i can get electrocute um which channels electricity into the enemy and i can get a thunderbolt so obviously a very different style let's take a look at one more maybe the pyromancer and that's again showing me a full preview right to the top of the soul tree where you can see up up the top there heat wave three minute cooldown that's obviously the big cooldown ability uh, and wow, that resets the cooldown of the mages' fire spells and reduces their casting time by 50%. So, you know, that would be a major goal if you were going to solely spec into this tree. And down the bottom half here, we can see that I'll immediately get a fireball and a flame bolt, which is kind of, by the sound of things, like a flame blast from the fire tree in WoW's mage area. So, I've been umming and ahhing. Um, Roman over you were saying that pyromancers are a good choice at the beginning. Oh, I can't get over that dance. My god uh, Pyromancers a good idea at the start because you didn't notice any resistances to fire uh, in the starting areas. Is that right? It's, yeah, at least not here. I haven't noticed any resistances, right? Um, and have you observed any majors running around? I mean is there a clear a clear um, Domination of a particular soul going on out there or are people all over the shop. What's going on? I think people are really just experimenting with everything at the moment. I mean, the game's only, what, a month or so old? Yeah, or less, yeah. That's true. So people are basically making whatever the hell they want. Right. And I guess that's the best advice anyone could give, and of course that both of us give to you guys watching. If you're going to be playing the game, um, don't bother hopping up online and trying to, you know, min-max your character and get the most out of it. Read the descriptions. 
control click on them here hover over the abilities down the bottom and say to yourself hey am i the sort of player that likes to cast lightning and thunder because you know that that is a totally different feel for example to somebody who's casting a salvo of stone projectiles there or indeed a warlock who is obviously hurling off things like life leech uh, very similar to the Warlock and WoW by the looks of things, places a leeching effect on the enemy, and Void Bolt. So that'd be, I'd imagine, a lot like the Shadow Bolt in World of Warcraft. Heals a ball of dark energy at the enemy, causing 18 to 20 death type damage. So just, you know, if anything, be guided by the tooltip here. As you'll see, if I hover over the Elementalist, it says, hey, a suggested set of pairings for the Elementalist is Storm Stormcaller and Pyromancer. Or if I hover over the Pyromancer as my primary talent tree or t uh, primary soul tree, it's going to say, hey, Elementalist or Archon. Uh, let's have a look at one more. Stormcaller. It's saying, go Elementist or uh, Elementalist or Dominator. Let's have a look at the Dominator tree because that sounds interesting. What is this? Okay, its first ability is Transmogrify. Transforms the enemy into a harmless squ <laughs> squirrel. So that's like being sheeped in WoW. I'd say, have you seen anyone got sheeped yet out there in the real world no I haven't okay that could be interesting um, or a neural prod assaults the enemy's mind with electrical energy I'm not sure I want to be domination at the moment that sounds like a bit of a shutdown class um, probably takes more skill than I have I just want to go boom boom as Tallahasse gives us the car Carlton in the background terribly off-putting but never mind <laughs> All right, I'm going to go, let's see, what have we got? Elementalist, which has a Stormcaller and a Pyromancer. Elementalist has the pet. I'm not a big fan of pets. Maybe we'll go a non, maybe we'll just go Pyromancer. We'll go with your original choice there. Let's get this over and done with. Poor old Tallahassee's been standing here for hours on end, wait, dying to get out into the action. Here we go, accepting our quest. And folks, it has been hours. And it has been ours. Yes, thank you for rubbing that in. Um, we just obviously want to make sure that we're covering off everything so we get it out of the way. Choose one of these. Here we go. We're going to choose Pyromancer. Our big finish. Ta-da. Oh, my gosh. Quest complete. That's nice. That's a nice big effect. We have no doubt that we've had a quest complete there. And as you'll see, what has appeared on my f uh, hot bar down the bottom is Fireball. Uh, heals a ball of fire at the enemy and flame bolt. That one I've got on the first uh, toggle there, uh, first action bar is toggle auto attack. So I've, I always like to have them at the beginning when I'm newly playing with the game. So there we go, the quest is over. Now, by the way, Romanova, uh, Romanova, I've got to get that out of my head. Tallahassee, where do I go to find my list of abilities uh, for when I get new ones and I want to drag them out to my ability bar? You click on P. P. Oh, yep, and there it is. Look, uh, abilities, the icon near the end there. P. There they go. Fantastic. So it's breaking them out into general. I've got my racial passive there. I've got my angelic flight, uh, my auto attack and ranged attack, and then I've got a pyromancer section. So that's great. Obviously, um, Tallahassee, as I get my uh, three souls, it's going to split them up separately so I don't have to wander through a great big list, yeah? Yep, that's right. Yep, beautiful. Okay, and you guys will be keen to notice at the end there, I've got drinking water, I've got a consumable, they've given uh, that to me out of the bat. Obviously, restoring 220 health and 385 mana. Okay, that's interesting. So, Tallahassee, there's, is this, oh, I don't know if you've played a casting class yet, but is it typical that both health pots and mana pots are the same thing? Like consumables, rather? Or do you actually get specific ones later, or, or have you not seen yet? No, you do get specific health and mana pots, but I haven't okay. seen any consumables yet. Okay, all right. All right, well, that's good that the consumable makes it a lot easier at the beginning. For a start, only takes up one inventory slot, and you don't have to worry about it. Whether you're low on health or mana, just pop one of those. All right, so now we have to accept this next one. What is it? The vigil brought back, blah, 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 blah. Speak with Fane outside the sanctuary to begin your holy crusade. And you'll have seen there also my little blue XP bar go up. I've now got 18% of the way to level 2. Let's accept this quest. Oh, you gained a soul. You have attuned your first soul. It's saying to me, soul abilities will automatically be added to your action bar, opened by pressing P 
which Roman over told us already. Now let's have it. Now I've got some buff here, Blessing of Passage. No idea what that is. And you can see on my mini map there, I've got to go northeast 55 meters. And if I hold M and choose my actual main mini map, you'll see it's marked on the map there. And don't forget, folks, look at me. I'm moving. The map is automatically fading out when I move. One of the best features ever in a game. I love it. And there's the world map, and you can still see our quest mark. And if you hover over it, it tells you what you need to do. All right, mate. Finally, the time has come. Can we go through here? We can, and we're out into the real world. I can hear you uh, breathing a huge sigh of relief. Finally got out. Now, I know you're going to hate me, but you must be used to it. I'm just going to check my settings because, because, folks, I've set the ground clutter density to maximum. So if there's ever anything that's going to kill your frame rate, it's all these blades of grass. Seems to be okay at the moment. Getting about... 25 frames per second which for me is fine for an MMO I'm just gonna play with it quickly and reduce them and see if it actually does uh, up my frame rate at all where are we here we go because um, pay to take attention here pay attention here because if there's anything that's gonna kill your frame rate it's probably gonna be this as we turn down the density and apply that you should see there you go you can see a lot of the grass has disappeared um, what's my frame rate gone up to let's have a look here so I'm getting about 25 frames per second there. Uh, if I turn this up to max, it's redrawing it, and I'm getting about 22 frames. So you know what? Not enough of a, a difference to bother. I'm going to leave it up high. Let's have a look how far it renders. If I bring the radius back down to 100, I'll hit apply. And what's happened to my frame rate? It's staying the same. So I might as well pump it right out. Yep, no difference. So, Roman, you were saying earlier on, uh, uh, went behind the scenes anyway, that you feel that the the game settings scale really well, like you don't seem to have to have an Uber PC. That certainly seems to be the case uh, for me. How's it playing on yours? I mean, my PC, I'm going to say, is fairly ancient. Right. And it's still rock steady at 25 frames a second. Right, and you're you've got relatively high settings. I do, yes. Okay, well that's good. I'm getting about 23 to 27, so I'm thinking that's probably what we've got to expect. And as you all know at home, um, you don't need 60 frames per second for an MMO. It makes basically no difference unless you're super into um, high-end PvP. I don't think it's really going to make a difference. And I'd much rather trade off frame rate for it looking like that. Look at that view, folks. The lighting, the textures, the amount of detail that's going on. It really is a beautiful game. Um, Tallahassee's been telling me for days now how beautiful it looks. Looks like you were right. It's fantastic looking. Love it. I get to be right every once in a while, mate. Yeah, yeah. All right, you'll be pleased to know I'm handing in this quest, so we're probably going to finally be able to kill some stuff. Here we go. It wants us to kill Ashen Defilers near the Sanctuary in Hallowed Hill, and I get some lesser healing potions for it, accepting that, and it's exciting because we're going to have some combat. And look at that. We can still talk to her. I do like this as an option. When we speak to the quest givers, um, they actually give you the quest or you can have a choice here to dive deeper into the lore. So if you wanted to know why we're going to be killing these Ashen Defilers, and how do I know that's what we're doing? Because I'm looking at the quest tracker on the right-hand side under my mini-map. It tells me exactly the name of the mob. Uh, it's also showing me whereabouts I need to kill them. But if you don't, if you want more than that, you can go in and actually start reading about the lore because obviously there's been a lot of effort put into that. And as it says here, maps and markers, locations for objectives are indicated on the mini map and the global map. Um, so that sun symbol there is a specific location of the objectives. Circles are a general location. So obviously, if you're in an area, you'll you'll get an area marker, and if you've got a specific thing to do, it'll pinpoint it specifically, which is great. And objectives that are too far away to be on your mini map are shown with an arrow. Now, in this case, you may not be able to see it on the YouTube video, but there's effectively a big circle running through the map. If I zoom out, there we go. On the mini map, you can see there's an area circled out. So that's basically saying, hey, anywhere in that general area, you're going to be able to find the mobs for your quest. If I hit my map button, 
you get to see that even more clearly and of course combined with the fading as we run around here you can see that we're running around inside that area that is exactly where we need to be in order to uh, find the objectives for our quest so very simple very smart love it a lot and something's popped up here combat for mages right click a hostile target within proximity to attack or you can also start combat by activating special abilities from your action bar so uh, you don't need to actually click the target as long as they're selected you could actually just use an ability and we'll get into that in a minute target health is the green bar we knew that um, mages use mana to provide spells and abilities and it does restore slowly over time but we can quickly restore it by drinking obviously and lastly mages build up a magical charge in this game by casting spells so the charge can then be used to cast special spells that are more powerful than your standard mana based spells so if you've ever played games like street fighter super street fighter 4 or um, warhammer online they have a very similar mechanic and it just means you can build or oh, superpower in dc universe online it means you can build up something special and use it when you think you need to so uh, you'll also notice if I target that mob uh, way ahead of us there, a great big yellow marker appears on its head, clearly um, indicating where it needs to be. And you'll notice that the numbers on my abilities here, 2 and 3, which represent the keys on my keyboard, are white. Now that's saying that I'm in range. I'm going to run away from that mob, and there you'll see a couple of things happen. Firstly, if I turn away from the mob, um, you'll notice that the numbers turn red. That means if I click on it, I'm going to click, nothing happens because I can't cast on a target that I'm facing away from. And this comes into play a lot later when we do PvP. But it's turning red to indicate that you don't have line of sight. And that's a really nice handy indicator. As we turn close to the target, you'll see there that it's turned white. Now, the other thing to note, if I hover over my fireball, it's got a 30 meter range. Let's run away from this as far as we can. And there you go. Even though I'm facing that target way off in the distance there, clearly I'm now out of that 30 meter range. And you can see, click, nothing's happening because the numbers are red. I'm just literally too far away. So that's all the basics of combat there. Um, let's start off by not using spells. Let's go up to it. Actually, we can talk to this person. We've got a garden, guardian spirit. There we go. If I right click, or rather if I hover over the mob, you'll see my icon for my mouse turns to an, uh, a sword that means I can attack them if I right click I'm going to begin melee attacking presumably with my staff and there we go and there it looks like it's auto attack in this game here comes Tallahassee and look at the health go down when Tallahassee starts hoeing into him great effects there great combat effects and obviously for me as a mage I don't want to be doing that too often only in a pinch because really what I'm designed for is long range uh, uh, casting for offensive spells Tallahassee what have you got in terms of spells have you got a combination of ranged and upfront melee or what's the go with you I will have a combination of ranged and upfront right at the moment though I've only got the one spell which is an upfront one and the other one is a buff Okay. Alright, so uh, obviously you're leading us over there. There's something glowy and shiny. Before we get there, we're going to try out our new spells. So the big difference, of course, between this and DCU is the fact that... Uh, oh, now notice that when um, Tallahassee and the mob are in combat, their portrait flashes red. So that means you know they're actually in a combat state. So that's really good to know. And you can also see the dots and buffs, debuffs that... Um, Tallahassee's combat is putting on that mob by looking at it under its portrait but um, uh, what we want to do is oh look at that bang so you can see Tallahassee's killed two mobs there it came up uh, on my quest log and I can see in the tracker here I've got two of six even though I haven't actually killed anything yet because he's in my party he's helping me um, contribute to that score now one big difference between this and DC Universe Online is remember this is like wow this is a game that has auto attack and we're kind of used to DC Universe Online where it's not auto attack the combat in DCU O is active combat meaning that if you don't push a button if you don't do anything you won't do anything your character won't attack it's very hands-on here we have auto attack so if you right click on an enemy just like well you will keep on attacking so it's an important thing to remember now what are you going to show us over here oh we've got glowy books let's cast our very first spell see what it looks like and you can see you've got a casting bar down the bottom there and whoa that took a huge chunk 
out of the Ashen Defiler. I'm going to right click on her to finish her off with your help. And now, what's the go with looting? Here we go. If you cannot loot for a second, as you notice guys, or you may not be able to see because it's a bit small, as we hover over that mob, my icon turns to a bag, obviously indicating that there's loot. And also you'll notice that its corpse is sparkling, so it's just like WoW. Right click on it. Um, and we've got some vendor trash in there. I'm not going to take it though because what we can do is we can auto loot And if you hold down shift and right click it will actually simply drop There you go. I didn't do anything. It just dropped those items You saw it pop into the bag there down the bottom right that has now automatically gone into my bag now I'm going to leave auto looting off for now, but you can actually turn it on so that you don't ever have to actually loot. And we will turn that on later, but for now we want to see what we're collecting because we might get new gear. That's the only reason. I don't want something to go into my bags and not realize. And Tallahassee, you've kindly found us another collectible because he knows that I can't resist it. We've got another book. Look at that. Permanently bind that to your character. Thank you very much, mate. We'll look in our inventory by hitting B. And obviously we can right click that book to collect, move it into collections, yes. And then if we go to our character log and go to books, there we go, we've now got two collected. Oh, lots of addictive collecting going on, I'm imagining. So we're up to four of six. Let's see if we can try out our other spell, which is a flame bolt, blasts the enemy with a fiery attack. Oh, no. Tallahassee's too good. He killed it before he got a chance. Tab, tab targeting, tab targeting seems to work. Let's use our other spell. Oh, look at that! It set it completely on fire, and a big boom, bang, fireball to finish it off. I love that, and we're done. I'm gonna just Believe attack. There's another book around the corner. Always another book. Good, good. We're just gonna try these attacks again because I want to check the casting time. Looks like one's an instant and one is a cast. Yes, so this fireball is, has a casting time of two seconds, so you probably want to fire that off first and then blast with the instant flame bolt, which has an eight second cooldown. So let's try that. Away we go, pumping up the fireball. You can see the casting bar down the bottom. And then we do the big boom instant and finish it off, hopefully. No, we'll do, do another fireball. And there you have it. Alright, so this is definitely going to be fun. Liking the combat already. How's the melee combat, by the way? You enjoying it? It's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, good. Have you gone to find a book? It's a bit button mashy, but it's fun. That's no, alright, as long as it's fun. Oh my god, there's piles of bodies here. That's disturbing. Ew! Look at that. That is gross. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty full on. Let's help Tallahassee over there. Boom. Alright, where's this book? You promised me a book. I thought it was over here. Oh, he's teasing me already. He's just playing with me, can't you tell? <laughs> well, I've got to have someone to make fun of. <laughs> Right now, you know before, now, okay, we can see the damage, um, like the scrolling combat text there. That's what's, uh, we, we set that option up in the uh, options menu itself, so we definitely want them, and we can see the XP and all the rest of it. Is the damage meters that we were talking about earlier, is that basically the little mini health bars that's appearing over their head um, when they start taking damage? And ours, in fact, as well. Is that what the damage meters are? The little mini, there's three little bars. Yep. Okay. Right, so whether I leave them on or off, I may, may turn them off later. But anyway, tab to target, guys. And then obviously, using your hotkeys on your abilities. Easy peasy. Now, what about the loot rules? How does that work? And can you change them? I actually haven't had a look at the loot rules yet, so... All right, you're let's... the man with the... Oh, I am. I'm the leader. Here we go. With the All right. Leadership, so go for it. Sorry, mate. I am too. I honestly thought you were leader. Okay, so right clicking on my own portrait, and yes, loot. We've got free for all, group loot, round robin, or master. So it's uh, the usual um, suspects there. And of course, a threshold for them, which is uncommon 
at the moment and we can set that to rare epic or common so you should all know what that is about we've got a ready check wow let's see if that works for does that work for a party did you get a ready check pop up yes everyone is ready yes i did lovely all right so that's good that it's actually in a party as well we've got pvp default or always on so there's our pvp flag we can as a party leader reset the instances oh and we can mark targets okay let's just quickly mark i wonder if i can mark our partner in crime here let's have a look mark target number one. Oh, okay this works a little bit differently okay oh I think it's because I'm marking myself because I'm right clicking on myself that's interesting let's clear the targets clear the marks right click on Tallahassee himself oh so that's a bit different so rather than the target you've actually got selected you have to right click on the portrait and mark target and it's a big number do you see the one above your head mate yes I do thanks yeah right that must be annoying for you and it looks like there's up to yeah eight targets so rather than symbols you know what at first I thought that's a bit naff but how much easier is it to just say target number one two three or four rather than skull etc etc I actually like that anyhow let's hand this puppy in because we've only got four minutes left in this episode we get ourselves some lesser healing potion oh my lord what the hell was that that's the biggest level up I've you ever just seen. Leveled? Yeah, <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> I know. Oh, there's no doubt that you're gonna but miss you... the fact that you level up, is there? No, it's just so over the top. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's classic. And we've had a tutorial pop up here about level. So each level grants you a soul point, which you can spend to unlock new traits open the soul tree by hitting level N okay so let's just quickly close this quest giver for a moment and you're right Roman uh, oh, God, I've got to stop doing that right Tallahassee we've now got a soul tree open to us which is N and there it is folks that's our real live soul tree I've got two points remaining for myself to spend um, I won't bore you with those yet I'll tell you what the abilities are improved fireball so a crit strike increase of 5% we've got Ignition, which decreases the cast time of your spells by 4% per point. And we've got Concentration, which reduces the amount of pushback suffered while casting by 33%. I will I will point into those offline so we don't bore you and uh, Tallahassee with my terrible, terrible decision making. Um, and no doubt when we do put, you can answer this question actually Tallahassee, when we put points into the soul tree up the top, is that what opens up? Uh, the abilities down the bottom yes it is all right and now there are numbers on the abilities down the bottom I presume that that's level is it it's saying you can only be level two before you get that ability that's right so the more points that you put into a specific tree yeah the more powerful I guess uh, abilities you get from down the bottom Oh, you're right. I see. So right down the very bottom of the ability here, tree, tree here, we're looking at one that's got the number 51 on it. Uh, so we need 51 points in the tree in order to get that. Would that be right? Well, that's right. I see. Okay. Right. So I need two points in this tree to get our next ability here, which is Flame Jet. Um, smothers up to six enemies in front of the mage with flames. Oh my lord, we want that. Um, and I have two points here <clears throat> so obviously we're going to be able to get that soon now can you answer us another question mate it says here I have two points remaining now is that ultimately going to be across all trees or is that just for this tree like that that mark that number down the bottom is that for them all or just one tree it's actually for all of them because you have to save your changes oh so if you have a look down the bottom it says to save and close I've only got close but I haven't made any changes yet so let's just randomly click on one here okay save and exit okay yep so you can actually go back and edit these oh, I can. so you I put can... two points into a tree yep if you don't like those points you can go ahead and take them out and put them put them somewhere else uh, I see look at that folks he's dead right of course I'm left clicking on these talents up the top which is putting a point into them I right click to remove it so it's great it's like a preview isn't it 
It is. I mean, I sort of wish World of Warcraft had this way back in the day. Yeah. Because it would have saved me about 17,000 gold. Oh, <laughs> I'm with you on that one, mate. Totally with you on that one. Um, and notice as well, folks, no matter which... And this is where the flexibility really start. Gosh, it's really starting to... Um, become clear in my mind now and there's our timer we've reached the end of the episode um, <clears throat> is that any I can put any two points in up the top and you watch what happens down the bottom to that third ability here if I go one two get ready to watch there it is it opens up it flames up so it does not matter which particular ability I do up here this is a, its own little strategy game up the top all in itself as long as there are two wholesale points going on across any of the trees then that flame jet ability will open up so that's really smart really clever and really flexible so like I said I'll close that for now I won't bore you with that we'll pick up this new face. quest before we log out for the episode summary is wants you to collect imbued swords in hallowed hill which is where we are now and we're going to get ourselves a new staff and look at that automatically built into the game if i hover over the crest quest reward it's automatically comparing uh the weapon that i have with the weapon that i can pick up so there you can see um right away that the one i have equipped as a gray item does two to three damage every three seconds and yet the green item uh, on the reward there shows that i'm doing four to eight and i can see that tooltip straight away a um tallahassee does that happen when you hover over items in your bag as well there's an automatic comparison tooltip pop up yes it does yeah brilliant He's off in the background there killing stuff because that's the kind of guy he is. We're going to accept this quest. Um, and someone has walked up to me named Harry Potter. Who the hell would name their character Harry Potter? That is disturbing. Although, actually, without giving the game away, um, I understand that you've created yourself an interestingly named character, mate. <clears throat> yes, I tested out the vanity filter for the names. Oh, is that the excuse Apparently, you've got? Apparently... Yeah, apparently Gareth Gobblecock isn't quite a bad name. <laughs> Gareth Gobblecock, trust you to pick that name. Oh my lord. Um, that'd be right. Now, also notice, by the way, folks, as I hover over Tallahassee way in the distance there, notice the tooltip down the bottom. It shows me his level, where he is, what his class is. It even shows me his health bar. Um, so that's nice and handy. And we've got sparkly bits here. These are obviously loots that are my turn to pick up because Tallahassee's been mercifully slaying mobs left, right and centre in our absence. Oops. So we've got lots to do, but we need to stop the episode because we've run out of time. We'll pick up right from here in the next episode. Thank you once again for joining us, mate. This is certainly an awesome fun game. Um, I can't wait until we get further in. How long till we get to Rifts? Uh... Once we get out of this starter zone, we'll see Rift, but at the very end of this starter zone, we'll actually come across a Rift. Wow. Okay, so it's not far away. Looking forward to that. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh, that episode again. Once more, not much combat, lots of um, chat, lots of investigating the systems. Uh, it's important that we get that stuff out of the way uh, at the beginning. Whoops, we've clicked on a mob straight away. Yikes. Get that stuff out of the way at the beginning so then we can concentrate on the boom boom bam bang having lots of fun and making sure that everybody understands what's going on in the game <clears throat> although as i'm sure you'll agree it's pretty simple it's pretty familiar if you've played any mmos before they've really done a great job in making sure that it does all feel familiar and you're not going to be bogged down trying to learn new systems everything's well explained so there you go we're over time oh my god there's a pet the hell she is a rogue and she's got a razor beast pet interesting anyway is there would you like to give us a special dance to finish off this episode surely we can't can't end the episode without some carlton buster moves and then, <laughs> there you have it one little known fact folks is that actually this is how tallahassee dances in real life when we go to the comic store on saturday mornings and then to the yellow bird cafe to have our brunch he's up on the tables busting out the carlton move you've really got to stop doing that mate it's it's really embarrassing the Seriously. ladies love it the ladies love it 
Yeah, well, we'll let you continue on thinking that. And in the meantime, guys, it's me, Sambo, it's Tallahassee, it's Seraphis saying thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Come back and see us next time when we really get into some combat and start getting ourselves out of the training zone. Take care, have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.